As an amateur baker, I thought I knew what I was doing in the kitchen, but today I'm learning from an expert. Not only how to create a gourmet bake, but how to stay safe doing it. We're traveling the state to learn how people stay safe in their weird and wonderful jobs. I'm Corey Jenkins, and this is Oregon Odd Jobs. Near the mouth of the Columbia River sits the town of Astoria, Oregon, famous for the Astoria Column, Goonies filming locations, and the Naked Lemon, a small bakery with delicious treats. Today, I'm learning from Alicia, not only how to bake macarons, but also how to avoid those common kitchen injuries. So Alicia, I'm Corey. Yeah, nice to meet you. Good to meet you as well. Um, tell us a little bit about the Naked Lemon. Well, the Naked Lemon Bakery was something that was born out of uh, a want to start my own business. I developed this as a pop-up bakery. I didn't have an intention in the beginning to have a full-on storefront, but it quickly grew into that. So I just kind of did it myself and DIY'd the whole thing up until this point. So, Tell us a little bit about safety. What are some of the hazards that we typically see in, in a kitchen like this? Some of the hazards that you could see is um, slipping. What you want to do is you want to have some non-slip things that are available to you. Good sturdy shoes, anti-fatigue mats, which also serve as a grip mat. We wear a lot of gloves for hand-to-food contact. And we use a lot of oven mitts too because we are a bakery. So we're baking things, we're handling a lot of hot pots. So today we are gonna make French macarons. It is a really difficult intermediate to expert level pastry to make. And so with the donning of my apron, I crossed the threshold from amateur to professional baker, at least for the day. After a good wash of my hands, we were ready to get down to business. Almond flour, check. Egg whites, check. Then get some sugar in a pot and add water. Move to the next pot, crack two eggs, separate the yolk from the whites, and get it ready to start whipping on the mixer. Wash your hands, then back to the first bowl and do a loose mix of the flour and eggs. Is there like a technique to where you're not injuring wrists or getting carpal tunnel? Um, a little bit. When um, I train people, we really try to tell them to put their um, put their muscle into it. Okay, so like instead of doing yeah, it don't by focus the wrist, on your wrist. Focus more on the whole arm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that prevents sense. a lot of injuries from occurring. That does feel better too. Yeah. With that done, it was time to start heating up the sugar while keeping a close eye on the temperature. We started whipping up the egg whites. And once the sugar was hot enough, we poured it into the mixer to make the meringue. With so many moving parts and precise measurements, I was amazed how Alicia could keep track of it all. In my opinion, this is really where the art of it really comes through, is that you really have to be vigilant of what you're doing and multitasking with. Um, and if you don't, that's where it can be ruined so quickly, as you know. Yes. <laughs> yeah. As the meringue finished, we put a portion into the almond flour mixture, stirred it up a bit, and then the rest went in as Alicia showed me her folding technique. Once ready, we transferred the batter into a pastry bag, and as we began to pipe it onto a tray, the macarons started to take shape. What sort of shape? Well, that depended on who was doing the piping. Even though mine didn't look quite as nice as Alicia's, Thankfully, we still had to put a little bit of sprinkles on top, which hopefully hid my imperfections. Next was a few hard slams on the counter to get out the air bubbles, and then we set them aside, waiting for them to get a skin coating on the tops. But as this was a bakery, there was no resting on our laurels. While we waited on the macarons, there were cupcakes that needed our attention. First, lemon curd. Then a swirl of frosting. This is also a situation where you want to be sure that you're not using your wrist more than you have to. Okay. If you press from the bottom and keep it straight up and down so you can see what you're doing. Okay. Swerve around. Oh, that's lovely. All right, here we go. With a few sprinkles, they were ready for the display case. It was time to check on how our macarons were doing. With a quick touch test, we could tell that the skin we were looking for had formed, meaning they were ready to bake. 
In the meantime, it was time to mix some cheesecake batter. That's a big mixer, right? Um, lots of spinning stuff. How do, you, how do you use it safely? So the mixer has a timer on it and you can hear it a little bit. And when the timer is on, the mixer is able to turn on. So for somebody that's using it, it's really important that they know that. And then another thing that we do before we turn it on is we pull the guard down. The macarons were done cooking and placed on a rack to cool, but not before noticing, well, <gasps> oh no, we had one. Those no. are mine. There's some cracked. that cracked a little bit. Yes. Don't, don't look at those. <laughs> don't look at the cracked ones. Once they cooled, we got a better look at the damage, which could have been from not being dry enough or simply being just a little too large. But we powered through anyway, even knowing they wouldn't make it to the display case. You still should be really proud of yourself, though, because most people don't even get to this stage. They, they're crying in a corner by that, this point. Yeah, or just like cursing the day that they decided to try them. Well, with a dollop of frosting and a piece of birthday cake, they didn't look half bad. At the end of the day, my macarons might not have looked good enough to sell, but they sure were good enough to eat. That is Everybody, delicious. You have wow. An, you have um, an audience. Wow. <laughs> you get that crisp from the edge. You do taste the cake in there, the birthday mm -hmm. cake. And that's all you, Corey. Mm. I mean, you helped a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So what did we learn today? Use anti-fatigue mats for comfort and to help prevent slips. Remember ergonomics, keep your wrist straight and use your whole arm for certain tasks. And always use machine guards to avoid entanglement. Well, Alicia, this was fabulous. I learned so much about baking and about safety. Uh, any parting words of wisdom for me? Gosh, just keep going on your journey of macarons and baking. Baking is an art, it's a skill, it's a craft. While my bakes didn't turn out perfect, they still taste fantastic but I need a lot more practice in the kitchen. Join us next time on Oregon Odd Jobs. So good. <laughs>